Continuation Perfect Redemption Plan Part 7 Continuing with Chapter 4-2 Page 62 When it was growing up in our fellowship, there were many mothers, and some were always complaining that our pastor would lodge in our house for months, but he would only pay them a visit for the weekend. And, just for peace's sake, my parents asked my pastor, Next time you come into town, please lodge at least one month at their home. But our pastor would say, They do not love God. I could not understand at that time why my pastor would say that the other mothers in the fellowship did not love God. They were coming to the fellowship, they were praying. It is when I started to share the gospel that I understood it, and on December the 4th, 2013, the Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance what my pastor said, they do not love God. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments, John 14 verse 15. And one of the commandments of Jesus is to go and make disciples of all nations, Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. They were not interested in being disciples. They wanted the pastor to do everything for them. The pastor should pray for their sickness, pray for their job, pray for their marriage. Some of them were living in adultery, and when the pastor was not in town, they would not come to the fellowship anymore for six months or a year, until the next time the pastor was in town. Of course a pastor will pray for your problems, but you need to be taught the word so that you can pray for your own problem side by side with the pastor, and you also go and pray for other people who are in need. People who do not want to become disciples are just selfish. They want to be helped eternally. They deliberately refuse to mature spiritually. It is only when we mature spiritually and stop being in our spiritual diapers that we can actually help other people around us and advance the kingdom of God. My parents and us, their children, were disciples. We were reading the Bible studies, praying as a family, fasting as a family. So when everybody had left the fellowship, we were the fellowship and stood alone. Our pastor was sometimes away for a year, two years, five years, yet we kept sharing the word of God, praying and studying his Bible studies day and night. Joshua 1 verse 7 to 8, Luke 18 verse 1. Our house was truly a house of prayer for all nations. It was not about the pastor, but about Jesus Christ our shepherd and the written word of God. We learned to pray for our own needs according to the written word of God. We learned to manifest the gifts of the Spirit. Focus on people who want to become disciples, Jesus invested his three and a half years of ministry in the twelve who wanted to become disciples. The crowds came and left, but it was the disciples that turned the world upside down for Christ. Moses' father-in-law said to him, The thing that you do is not good. You will surely wear away both you and this people that is with you. For this thing is too heavy for you. You are not able to perform it alone. Listen now to my voice. I will give you counsel, and God will be with you. You be for the people toward God, that you may bring the causes to God. And you shall teach them ordinances and laws, and shall make them know the way in which they must walk, and the work that they must do. And you shall look out of all the people, able men and women, such as fear God, men of truth, hating unjust gain and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all times. And it shall be every great matter they shall bring to you, but every small matter they shall judge. And make it easier for yourself, and they shall bear with you. If you will do this thing, and God command you, then you shall be able to endure, and all this people shall also go to their place in peace. And Moses listened to the voice of his father-in-law, and did all that he had said.
And Moses chose able men out of all Israel, and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And they judged the people at all times. The hard causes they brought to Moses, but every small matter they judged themselves. Exodus 18, verse 17 to 26. Our job is to teach through these Bible studies what the ways of God and the acts of God are, what the will of God is, what He says about who you are, and what He has freely given to you. Our job is to pray for all of you who read these Bible studies, even though we have never met some of you face to face, or we have never even talked to you over the phone. Our job is to pray and fast for all of you who read these Bible studies, so that the Spirit of the Lord will stir you up to become doers of these Bible studies, like He stirs us up to become doers of them ourselves. Haggai 1 verse 14 Just like Moses said to God, Did I conceive all these people? Did I beget them, that you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom, as a guardian carries a nursing child, to the land which you swore to their fathers, a land flowing with milk and honey? Numbers 11 verse 12 The truth is, God is the one who conceived every born-again believer. He is the one who begets them through Christ Jesus. But He involves us in the process of begetting those people into the kingdom of God. He wants us to be co-laborers with Him. God sent Moses and delivered His people through Moses. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong toward those whose heart is loyal towards him. 2 Chronicles 16 verse 9 And God says, I sought for a man or a woman among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it. But I found none. Ezekiel 22 verse 30 for Israel, God found Moses and sent him to deliver them from the bondage of Egypt, and every born-again believer has been called to go and deliver their fellow humans from the pit of hell. Moses carried the entire nation in his bosom. Daniel also, in Daniel 9, carried the whole kingdom of Judah that was in captivity in Babylon, in prayer and fasting, though he had never met the majority of them, and they returned to Jerusalem in the days of Cyrus. I remember the night before I was water baptized in one of the community swimming pools in Manchester, England. I had a vision, and in that vision I immersed myself in the pool, and when I came out of the pool I had a rod of iron in my right hand, and was wearing a white robe. In the vision the pool was circular, and there were fifty people standing on the edge of the circular swimming pool. They were all holding a rod in their right hand, and on top of their rod was a flag of the nation they represented. When they saw me coming out of the water with the rod of iron in my right hand, they all put their rod with a flag representing their nation attached to it on the floor and knelt down. When I woke up, I knew that the rod is Jesus, and he will use me to impact fifty nations and deliver souls in fifty nations. Moses also had the rod of the Lord, and he went with that rod to deliver the Hebrews. The rod of the Lord turned into a snake and swallowed the rods of the magicians of Egypt. And in Psalm 2, God asks us to ask of the nations, and he will give it to us, and those nations who are raging against Jesus, the anointed of the Lord, will bow to him and kiss him as their king, lest they be utterly destroyed. Five years later, the Lord Jesus woke me up one morning to give me a deeper revelation of that vision I had the night before my water baptism, saying, Jerry, if you who overcome and keep my works unto the end, to you will I give power over the nations, even the fifty European nations, and you, Jerry, shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. 
Remember in Psalm 2, the Father put the rod of iron on my hand to break the nations and their bonds in pieces. Now I, Jesus, the anointed of the Lord, dwell in you and put the same rod of iron in your hand to do the same works over the nations. And I will give you the morning star, for I, Jesus, am the bright and morning star and as the sun of righteousness i will arise in you and shine through you i as the light of the world with healing in my wings revelation 22 verse 16 matthew 5 verse 14 to 16 malachi 4 verse 2 what i am saying to you i am saying to all who are willing to overcome and keep my works unto the end for I am no respecter of persons, but in every nation, whosoever fears God and practices righteousness is accepted by God. Mark 13 verse 8 to 37 and Acts 10 verse 34 to 35. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Revelation 2 verse 26 to 29. So, you and I are working together with the same purpose to save 50 nations, even the 50 European nations. If you are reading these Bible studies, you are part of that vision. For just like Moses appointed rulers of 10, rulers of 50, rulers of 100, rulers of 1000, etc., God also has appointed you first over your house to teach them and disciple them. Go, lead your loved ones to Christ and disciple them. You need to pray with them in the beginning because people struggle to pray and they need to listen to how you are praying so that they can also pray the way you pray in line with the scriptures. That is why the disciples of Jesus asked him to teach them how they should pray in Luke 11. You should teach them to learn to pray for at least one hour, for Jesus commanded his disciples to do so. Matthew 26 verse 38 to 40. Jesus says, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Matthew 21 verse 13. Your body is now his house, so learn to pray for at least one hour and teach the people you disciple to do so and help them in the beginning. You will need to read your Bible every day and read the Bible studies that are sent to you free of charge. The Bible is so big and it can be confusing if you are left on your own to study it. That is why we write these Bible studies to give you a shortcut in your studies. For Moses said, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may follow all the words of this law. Deuteronomy 29 verse 29 So whatever God has already revealed to us, we have put it in writing so that other people can run with that revelation God has given us. John puts it this way, that which we have seen and heard we declare unto you, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ. And we write these things to you, so that your joy may be full. And this is the message which we have heard from him and declared to you. 1 John 1 verse 3 to 5 And you will discover that as you ask God for things in prayer, you will receive them speedily because you have the revelation the apostles had. Your joy will be full. John 16 verse 24 And Paul puts it this way to Timothy, his disciple, Until I come, attend to reading, to exhortation, to teaching. 1 Timothy 4 verse 13 Meditate on these things. Be in these things in order that your improvement may appear to all. Hold on to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for doing this you shall both save yourself and those who hear you. 1 Timothy 4 verse 14 to 15 Therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus.
and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit the same to faithful men and women who will be able to teach others also. 2 Timothy 2 verse 1 to 2 So Paul taught Timothy some things and he asked him to pass it on. The same thing I am doing here. You are that faithful man and woman that the Lord has found, and I commit to you what the Lord has taught me in the Scriptures and in experience that must always line up with the Scriptures, so that you also may teach other people and commit the same thing to them. The relationship between disciple and disciples is very important because they will pray for each other. So please, remember Jerry in your prayers. The disciples will pray for the disciple and the disciple will pray for the disciples. They will pray for each other and with each other. Paul says, Obey those who have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Hebrews 13 verse 17 I never understood that scripture before, but as I started discipling people and they willingly chose to submit themselves to my leadership, as long as what I was telling them and teaching them in my Bible studies was in line with the written word of God, God started to reveal to me things that were happening in their lives, what questions they were asking God and what challenges they were facing. So I will pray for them or I will answer the question of their heart even before they ask them. God will show you the problems or the demonic attacks over individuals, over families and over churches under your leadership. You will literally watch over their souls. Paul, an apostle to the Gentiles, had many Gentile churches under the leadership. Paul told them, Though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit, and delight to see how disciplined you are, and how firm your faith in Christ is. Colossians 2 verse 5 God many times shows me what my disciples are doing, going through and being attacked with, and at times I call them on the phone or send them a text message or an email. When believers in Corinth were sinning, Paul saw it spiritually, for even when some of my disciples are just having an appearance of sexual sin, the Lord reveals it to me and I call them to tell them to stop it before they commit the sin. Some obey and submit to the word of God I minister to them, but others disobey and sin sexually. I give them a call and tell them I know what they have done. They need to repent and not do it again. You will discover that you will be watching over the souls of the people you disciple and churches under your leadership, and you will be even watching over nations that the Lord has given to you. Sometimes when we are facing challenges in our life, we call brothers or sisters who truly care about us to pray with us about our challenge, and sometimes when we have lost all hope that we will be delivered from our situation and do not even feel like praying about our situation or believe God for his promises concerning us to come to pass. These brothers and sisters who truly care about us will pray for us because they know we have lost all hope and are no longer willing to even pray on our own or with anybody about our situation. And the people who will genuinely pray for you when you are in such a situation are your disciples or your disciples. That is why meeting in homes is very important and discipleship is very crucial because we have each other's back. In Acts 12, 1-25, Herod beheaded James, the son of Zebedee, the brother of John the Beloved. When he saw that it pleased the Jews, he had Peter arrested and was planning to behead Peter after the Passover feast of the Jews. But Mark, also called John, who was a disciple of Peter, 1 Peter 5 verse 13, and other disciples were praying for the deliverance of Peter in the house of Mary, the mother of Mark, Acts 12 verse 12. Though the whole church was praying without ceasing for the deliverance of Peter, but in the house of Mary, the mother of John Mark, 
Peter knew that they prayed with all their heart for his deliverance. When he was delivered, Peter visited them first to inform them of the miracle. Now while John Mark, Mary his mother, and the other disciples who were gathered in her house were praying for the deliverance of Peter, when the angel came into the prison to liberate Peter, he even thought it was a vision, until he came out and the angel left him. Then Peter realized that it was in fact reality. Jesus in John 21 promised Peter that he will die of a good old age, not that young. Thank God that the church in the house of Mary, the mother of Mark, prayed as well as other churches. Let us pray with one another and for one another. As disciples of Jesus, we also need to fast. Jesus fasted in Matthew 4 verse 1 to 11. As we read throughout the book of Acts, we see the disciples of Jesus fasting. And Jesus himself tells us that there are some demons and sicknesses that only go out by prayer and fasting. Matthew 17 verse 21 In the application of perfect redemption plan, we explain in length some of the reasons we should pray and fast. It is not a rule, but like Paul says, I think that I also have the Holy Spirit, so I will advise every born-again Christian to at least give 10% of their time to fast, even if it is only until 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. like Cornelius did in Acts 10. Just like they give a minimum of 10% of their income or profit to God, let them also purpose to give at least 10% of their time to God in fasting. So, if the month has 30 days, they can decide to fast 3 days in that month. They can do it at the end of the month, or they can do one day every week. When we talk about fasting, people are not happy. They will say, Jesus already fasted 40 days and 40 nights for me. I do not need to fast. Jesus also read his Bible when he was on earth. He prayed when he was on earth. So does it mean that we no longer read our Bible nor pray because we are in Christ Jesus and he already read the Bible and prayed? Come on, let us grow up. Our discipline as disciples of Jesus includes reading our Bible every day, praying every day and fasting as we have purposed in our heart and as the Holy Spirit is leading us. Without a disciplined life, we will not be effective soldiers of Jesus. Paul uses the example of the army and he is right. He said to Timothy, Therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one who wars tangles with the affairs of this life that he may please him who chose him to be a soldier. 2 Timothy 2 verse 3 to 4 a soldier has training and is disciplined. He learns how to use all the weapons at his disposal. He learns all the strategies of the enemy so that he will not fall into them. He trains in such a way as if he was going to be deployed instantly. The word of God is a sword of the spirit, so we need to become familiar with the sword and all the other weapons at our disposal. If the U.S. Army only trained when they hear news that they are attacked by the enemy, they will lose every battle and every war. The best war strategy is the offensive, taking the battle into the enemy camp. Do not wait and allow the enemy to bring the war to your gates. That is why Jesus tells us, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew 16 verse 18 Jesus' intention is for us to take the battle to the enemy's camp and utterly destroy them. Gideon took the battle to the Midianites' camp and utterly destroyed them. Judges 6 and Judges 8 the U.S. Army did not prepare for the terrorist war. They were caught off guard and it was too late. For the first time, the war was on U.S. soil, and on 9-11, they witnessed that the enemy was already inside their country and taking many lives. When we go to war without having studied our enemy, we are bound to make mistakes because we know almost nothing about our enemy and what his strategy is.
And we see when the USA responded to the 9-11 attack, they made mistakes and innocent people suffered because of that. If you do not know yourself and have the inventory of your military arsenal and the military arsenal of your enemy and what the strategies of your enemy are, you are going to lose the war. Jesus says, suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? Luke 14 verse 31 Jesus is telling us first to sit down and study our own army, study our weapons, study the things that have been freely given to us by the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus and know who we are in Christ. Learn to use our weapons and become expert in our military arsenal and then study our enemy, what his weapons are, what his traps are, what his strategies are, and then we will always be able to win all our wars. Some Christians think that it is God who is tempting them, or giving them sickness or diseases, so that they will have compassion. Those Christians have been deceived by the devil. James tells us, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. James 1 verse 13 So it is not God who sends people to hate you, to persecute you, to envy you. All those works of the flesh are the weapons of the devil, for the weapons of the devil are only carnal, but the weapons of God are spiritual. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4 God does not use the weapons of the devil to train his children. The devil and God do not work together. They are enemies. Also, God does not use sickness and disease to train you to have compassion on people. Jesus has compassion on the sick and diseased, yet he himself was never sick or diseased. God will not tempt you to commit fornication or adultery or divorce your spouse to commit any other sin to teach you to have compassion on those who sin, on the prostitutes or on the divorcee. Jesus had compassion on sinners, on prostitutes, on adulterers, John 8, on people who were married five times and who were living in fornication, John 4, yet he himself was without sin. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning, and for this purpose the Son of God was made manifest, to destroy the works of the devil, starting with sin, then sickness, disease, and premature death. 1 John 3 verse 8 God never uses the weapons of the devil to train his soldiers. But why does James say, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience? But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. James 1 verse 2 to 4 Think of it this way. The U.S. Army or the British Army does not train its soldiers so that they will suffer under the hand of the enemy. No. The aim of the tra training is so that they will win the war and not be captured by the enemy at all. But in case they have been captured by the enemy and the enemy is trying to torture them, now what was put in them during the training will come out. They will resist the enemy and fight back and defeat him, and the enemy will flee from them. They will pursue the enemy and utterly destroy him. James says, submit to God by standing on his word. Then resist the devil and he will flee from you. James 4 verse 7 God is not the one sending the attacks toward you. It is the devil who comes but to steal, kill and destroy. But Jesus has come so that you may have life and have it more abundantly. John 10 verse 10 The thing is, the moment you start standing on God's word and sharing the word of God with people around you and discipling people, healing the sick, casting out demons and raising the dead, you become a target for the devil because you are destroying his works. 
People are being set free from hell and are receiving eternal life. People are no longer sinning. People's marriages are restored. People's finances and businesses are restored. People are loosed from their addictions, etc. So the devil does not want you to keep spreading that word of reconciliation. So he attacks you first to try to kill you with sickness and diseases and instant death. But when he fails, because you know how to stand on the word of God for your healing, and that no plague shall come near your dwelling, Psalm 91 he tries to discourage you by threatening you that if you continue to help other people, he will keep troubling you. Resist him and he will flee from you. Some Christians want to hide and not minister the word of reconciliation to anybody because they are afraid that the devil will trouble them. This is the answer of Mordecai to such Christians. If you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews and other born-again Christians or even unsaved people will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. For sooner or later the devil will come after you in your father's house. When he has failed in his attempts to destroy us, he will come after you in your palace where you are hiding and you think that nobody knows that you are one of us. Yet who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Esther 4 verse 14 when you become born again, you became a royal priesthood. It is time for you to learn who you are and to go and bring relief and deliverance to the people around you. There is no such a thing as peace with the devil. He is a murderer from the beginning. He goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. John 8 verse 44 and 1 Peter 5 verse 8 He only devours the weak. So strengthen yourself in the Lord and become a valiant soldier of the cross of Jesus. To be continued.